Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. This is episode two of the Canadian Welding Bureau test. So we're going to be running this in the 2GF. Yes, that does sound strange, but um, it's not normal nomenclature here in the States. What that stands for is groove and fillet. So we're going to be running this in the horizontal position. The bottom piece is a square 90 degree uh, cut plate. This top piece is a 30 degree bevel. We're required to make one start and stop. Uh, on the bevel side, so that's a little bit different from when we ran the flat position where we had two. The horizontal is the only one that has one start and stop or a single start and stop. Everything else has two starts and stops. Also, this is a 5 16 root opening, whereas in one, three, and in the four position, we have a half inch root opening. So, root opening is a little bit smaller, only one start and stop. We're still going to do three bends, two roots, and one face bend. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's talk plan of attack. So I went ahead and put a uh, just bent piece of electrode up here. That way it gives me a nice visual indication of where I need to stop just in case I don't see that soapstone mark while I'm underneath the hood, which it's, it's a good possibility I'll miss that completely. So this is kind of like a hard stop. I'll go ahead and break the arc here, do the tie-in. I'm just gonna point down at a 45 degree angle hitting the backing strip and this 90 degree plate here. I'm gonna run that bottom pass first, uh, break the arc, we'll clean it up, we'll check it out. We'll go ahead and proceed with the tie-in, and then I'll go ahead and hit the, uh, the bevel right after that for pass number two. Run some inner passes, let her cool down a minute. I'm running about 123 amps on the uh, ESOB 235 IC. Same settings as before with the uh, arc force. I think we got her dialed in at about 25%. Hot starts right around 30. All right, so at this point, we go ahead and call the inspector over, say, hey, here's uh, this where you told me to do my start and stop. Crater's about dead center of that uh, inch and a half mark from the edge of the plate. If he buys off on it, everything's good. I'm just going to go ahead and tie back into it. Again, I'm going to start about three-eighths ahead of that crater, tie back into it, and carry on like I never stopped. All right, so upon uh, further examination of the actual directions of this, this test setup, if you guys are planning on doing this, one thing I did, uh, I screwed up and I put the restart on the square plate side. You're actually supposed to put it on the bevel side. Uh, not saying that that's what caused the, the issue that I had, but if you're going to perform this test properly, uh, go ahead and do the restart on the bevel side, not the square groove side. Everything looks like it tied in well. So what I'm going to do now is just run the, uh, the third pass. I'm going to start my inner passes all the way until I can uh, get ready to go to cap. So I already have one, one layer of weld in there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this next pass in, kind of see where I'm sitting. Probably gonna have to do, definitely going to have to put two in here. I just want to see how close I am to the surface before I go ahead and uh, go to cap. Anytime you're going to do any sort of uh, weld test, you're laying the foundation for your cap. So, I mean, your cap actually starts when you put your root in. So everything that you're putting in on top of that root is going to reflect on your cap. So if everything is nice and smooth underneath, your cap should reflect that. Uh, when you start getting high spots or low spots or anything like that, that's when you have to start making a plan in your head. Maybe I only weld from here to here because I have a low spot and everything else is exactly where I need it. I can put whatever bead sequence in here that I prefer. It's recommended that I use stringers. I'm probably going to run stringers, but it doesn't say anywhere in the documents or even within AWS that I have to run a full weld every time I strike an arc. So if I have a low spot in this little area here, like I do, I could fire one up and just run about a quarter of the way through and snap out of it. Now everything is the same elevation or the same height or thickness throughout the whole piece. So that lays the foundation because if I go to put a cap on top of that, I run the risk of maybe being a little low there. All right, so that was pass number four. Everything's good so far. I'll put pass number five. I'm just gonna angle up a little bit more towards that beveled edge, get a good tie in there, get a good 50% overlap on this uh, the weld that I just put down. We'll see where we're at after that. It looks like I'm pretty close to going to cap. Let me throw this one in here before I make a firm decision. It's gonna be a couple, la or a couple less welds than it was in the uh, the one GF position, just for the simple fact that I've reduced it from a half inch opening to five sixteenths. So if I have a tighter groove angle, I actually have to deposit a lot less weld metal in there to do that or to fill that gap up. Uh, again, I can't go over an eighth of an inch with my weld reinforcement on the cap, but I can't be anything less than flush. I'm allowed to have up to one thirty second of undercut. Um, hopefully, we don't have any of that. That's why I'm going to let it cool for a couple minutes. I like to uh, let some of the heat get out of there so my puddle's a little bit more manageable. Uh, and we're just gonna go through. Uh, again, make sure to use your run-on and run-off tabs. 
These things are here in your benefit. A lot of people, they prefer not to use them because they think once they get in there, you know, if they use that run on and run off tab, they're gonna have to do a restart. If you have to do a restart, oh well, that's part of the game, right? That's the only way you're gonna get good at it is to practice your starts and stops. All right, the top side is, uh, is tied in up against the bevel. I have the bottom side, everything's good there. I'm about a 16th below on both of them. Yeah, we'll let this cool for a couple minutes. We'll come back and uh, get ready for the cap. Okay, so uh, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strike the arc over here just like I have been in, uh, in the previous wells. I'm gonna slow down just a tad, probably the first inch and a half because I'm slightly low, not enough to try and uh, add more filler wire. I'm gonna kind of go up almost at an angle, but I wanna make sure that I break this edge over. So I got stuck. So the best thing to do when you get stuck, just disconnect the stinger right from the electrode. See, it happens to everybody. I disconnect the stinger here because if I would just try to break it, if I get any arc strikes on the plate, that plate is uh, it's now a really good practice plate. So disconnect it here, let it you know freeze for a second. Now I'll just be able to snap this off and I'll go right into a, uh, a restart right here after I get this cleaned up. <clears throat> All right, now again, I can't use any power tools to reshape or remove any of this metal. Luckily, I've got a decent sized crater here. So again, I'm just gonna start about three eighths ahead, strike it, pull back, and then continue on like I never stopped. Everything looks good. I'm biting into that edge, so I'm just gonna keep that same technique, same momentum all the way through. Not sure why I stuck. Uh, you know, sometimes it just happens. You can't do anything but own it and work through it. I mean, this is part of being a welder. You gotta know how to do this stuff. So that's why I said don't fear tie-ins. Um, you're gonna have to do them once in a while, whether you like it or not. Again, I'm gonna try and get about an eighth inch of my uh, of, of the bottom toe of my weld to come over here and, and cover this hard edge right here, and then I'll just be able to stack the other two welds right on top of that for the the cap. Almost like building a set of stairs. We always start at the bottom and work our way up. That's just gonna lay more foundation for me to build the next pass on. I want something for it to sit on. Right now, I got this nice little ledge. That weld that I'm gonna put down now is gonna act as a step for my next weld, so on and so forth. All right, here's the spot where the arc got stuck. We're just gonna turn that into a happy little tie-in. So we're all good here. I'm above flush all the way through. No undercut on the bottom that I can currently see. Uh, every part kind of grabs the tip of that, that welding rod, so I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna go ahead and strike off. Remember, I'm gonna cover this pass up 50%. Go right through here, build that next step for that final cap. All right, so as you can see, as I'm going through here, I'm just making sure the bottom part of my toe is covering up that first weld, the first weld of my three bead cap, 50%. As long as I can maintain that, I'm doing good. I don't wanna go up too high. I don't wanna wash into the top edge of that beveled plate because that's gonna give me a good visual line to follow when I put that third cap in. Once I get down here to the end, I'm gonna slow down just a tad, kind of play around in that puddle a little bit because I wanna build that area up. That's the end of the test plate, but it's still in play as far as uh, when it comes to inspection, the visual inspection. I wanna make sure that I'm at least above flush or flush to a, uh, you know no more than an eighth of an inch. All right, so everything looks good. I'm above uh, flush, so that's right, right, right where I wanna be, under eighth, above flush. That's very important throughout this whole test. Uh, the next thing, I didn't wanna deteriorate or compromise this top edge here because now I've got a good visual representation while I'm under the hood of where I need to drag that puddle up to. Because remember, the edges of my puddle are eventually gonna be the toes of my weld. So if I'm paying attention to the edges of my puddle, I know where the toes of my weld are gonna be. I want the bottom toe to cover up pass number two, 50%, and I want the top part of my puddle to cover up the other 50% of that weld. I want it to be above this hard edge right here. Uh, I wanna pay a little bit more attention to the top, so I'm probably gonna push that puddle up there just a little bit, hold for a split second, because I don't want any undercut. If I travel too fast, I can get undercut. If I travel um, too slow, I can get a high, wide bead, pro bead profile that's gonna be hard to control. So I just wanna maintain a smooth, steady travel speed and just kind of watch the edges of the puddle. I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, other than the fact that I got stuck right here, but it was right outside the welding zone, so I'm not too concerned about it. Just kind of wanted to build that area up a little bit, didn't get the opportunity. Um, I don't know what's going on with me. 
Everything looks nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead, take it down now. We'll take it over to the table. We'll throw some inspection tools on it, see how it looks, uh, you know, using some gauges. If everything passes, we'll go ahead, get it cut up, uh, take the, uh, the front cap off or take the weld off, we'll remove the backing strip, and we'll go ahead over to the bender. Uh, before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and mark uh, this plate as it sits. Once again, the, uh, the two roots and the face bend so that I can make sure that this piece right here where we did our start and stop initially is uh, once again one of the roots that gets bent because that's why they have you do that start and stop right on the root in that specific area is because they're testing your ability to perform a start and stop. I want to make sure that's marked so we don't lose it uh, in these three coupons. All right, so the first thing the inspector's typically going to look for is tooling marks. We're not allowed to have uh, any tooling, mark or tooling marks on the surface. So if you beat it up pretty heavily with a chip and hammer trying to get that slag off or you're trying to get off some weld spatter or little BBs and you got a bunch of tooling marks on there, your plate's probably going to get rejected. The next thing I'm going to look for is undercut. So once again, I'm going to use this light and make sure I've got a little bit of undercut right here. So I'm going to hit that with a VWAC gauge here in a second. I just want to identify any areas that might have undercut in them. So I'm going to check both of the toes. Okay, it looks like just this area here. Now I'm allowed to have 1 32nd of undercut in this piece. And I've got just a little bit right there. So I've got about a 64th of undercut in that area. So I'd say we're good. All right, so the cameraman's saying like right in this area in his camera, which sees better than I can, that there's is that a good spot right there? Yep. That there's some undercut right here. So again, there's about a 64th right there. Another 64th. So we're still within specs in those areas. So nothing to worry about. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this plate out, mark my roots and faces and permanent marker. We'll go ahead and get this cut up. We should stamp it, but we don't have a stamping kit. We should probably invest in one. We'll uh, we'll get this cut up. Get the uh, the weld face taken off. Take the cat or take the backing strip off the back. Radius the edges and then take it over to the bender and see if I got it. What it, what it takes to become a 2GF CWB welder. All right, so I have everything laid out. These are all the inch and a half strips that we're going to be taking out. I'm just going to use a cutoff wheel, six inch cutoff wheel, once again to take care of them. But I want to go ahead and mark out uh, the. This is going to be 2R. Position two. This is going to be a root bend. This is going to be 2F, position two, face bend. And then over here where we had the tie-in with the root, this is going to be 2R as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up, get them prepped, and I'll meet you guys at the bender. All right, so everything's prepped up. I uh, got the face, the two roots. I'm gonna go ahead and bend the face first because I do have one tiny little indication right here that's kind of got me worried. So I'm gonna try to save that for last. Uh, let's go ahead and see how they bend. So again with the face, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the bender face down so that all the pressure is applied uh, from the, uh, the ram to the back side or to the root side of the plate. And it's going to put all the stress and force down here on the face of that weld. All right, so it looks like we got a clean bend on the face. That's one bend down. Let's go ahead and move on to the first root. Ram goes to the face on a root bend. All right, another clean bend on the root. No indications, no corner cracking. It's good, I like that. Now let's bend the one I was worried about. All right, so as you can see, I got a tiny little inclusion right here. So anything, once we bend it, anything less than an eighth is a pass. Anything greater than an eighth, uh, well, you know what that means. Got to retest. Let's go ahead and throw it in there. Again, plunger to the face side, putting all the stress on the root. All right, so I can already tell without putting a tape measure on it that this indication is greater than an eighth inch. So that is, that's not even the spot that I was worried about. I was worried about this little dot here. Uh, but we do have an indication doesn't look like there's any slag inclusion in there, just a lack of fusion. So I do have a rip on here. I'm gonna guess it's about 3 16ths of an inch. We'll go ahead and measure it just for, just for fun. All right, so it looks like it's a uh, 7 30 seconds. So that's definitely bigger than an eighth. So didn't have what it takes to pull this one off. It's unfortunate, but hey, it happens. You know, everybody needs a little practice every now and then. So as you can see, that's the 2R, still my original soapstone mark right on the inside 
when we did that that stop and start. So definitely, I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board, practice this one up a little bit. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Um, one thing I want to mention is we've always kind of gone out of our way to not hide our mistakes on the show. So sometimes we screw up just like anybody else. Case in point right here, um, got two out of three good bends in here. So that tells me I need to work uh, on my horizontals a little bit more. So uh, this is actually the first horizontal test I've ever taken. I've always qualified flat and horizontal by doing a three and four G test. So probably need a little bit more work on my horizontal. Everything looked good. Uh, it's probably just that tie in practice is key. You know, that's why I always say make every weld better than your last. So I've evaluated myself and I know where I need to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and make my, make my next welds better than this one. And that's what it is. It's just a learning experience the whole time. That's the great thing about welding is you're always constantly getting better. So thanks for taking the time to watch. We definitely appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe because we're going to do a 3GF and 4GF in the videos to come in this series with the Canadian Welding Bureau. So till next time, make every weld better than your last. Ha.